G'day, Andy from Single Malt. Andy Gowan. Today I'm going to do a whiskey from a distillery that's, let's say, close to my heart. A long time ago, too many years ago, to remember, and bought a an old rust bucket of a boat. A man came up to me on rum time, that was the name of the boat, good name for a boat, and he said, do you want a scotch, mate? And I said, nah. Scotch was that crap my mum and dad used to drink, drowned in dry ginger ale, bloody awful stuff. So I didn't want to drink that stuff. And he said, no, 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 this isn't scotch, this is single malt. Hmm. Okay, we'll give it a try. Tasted it. Wow. Where had this been? It was rich and intense and inviting and delightful and sweet and delicious. I couldn't wait to try it again. And I learned that they're not all the same. They're all different. There are all these nuances and wonderful characteristics that can be discovered. It was, oh, what an exciting time. Well, many years have gone under the bridge since I first tried Bowmore Legend on board Rum Time. And that man changed my life. You might know him. His name's Brad. Mm. Yes. Ever since then, I've had a particular fondness for Bowmore, or Bowmore, an Isla whiskey. And the Bowmore legend um, was a you know, it's good whiskey, and a good whiskey for a, for a beginner. And I enjoyed that. So I'm quite looking forward to trying Bowmore. Bowmore's one of those whiskies that are very, I don't know, maligned. It's, it's a wonderful distillery right down on the coast, and I mean on the seaside, um, literally like on the cliff, and it's very low, so it's often, whenever there's a storm, it gets covered in sea mist. And right in front of the barrel house and the and the malting, malting house and the distillery is um, it's for, uh, or all these kelp beds. So the storms come in and break up the kelp, and there's always a mist and a spray over the distillery, and there's a smell about the place from this sea mist, and that sea mist is caught in the distillery and in the barrel houses that are right down. On the sea side, <laughs> um, and the malting houses. So the barley is actually malted on site in Bamore, which is very unusual. There's only a handful of distilleries that do that anymore. And because it's done on site, <clears throat> that real freshness is captured in the in the spirit, and that imparts this lovely, fresh, fruity character to the spirit. So I'm looking forward to trying that in this in this whiskey. That's what I'll be looking for. But also, this whiskey is called Gold Reef, which is uh, a reflection on the reef right outside the distillery. Um, and the <clears throat> the this whiskey is mainly aged in first fill American oak barrels. Now barrels can be used several times, but these are predominantly first fill. American oak barrels. There is some sherry butt, I believe, but predominantly first fill American oak. So each time a barrel is used, it imparts less and less character. So first fills impart the most character. So I'm expecting to get a lot of the vanilla and caramel character from the American oak combined with the, the natural um, fruity freshness uh, and that salty, briny character from Beaumont. So 
I've already got an image in my head of what this whiskey's going to taste like. I hope it lives up to my expectation. Um, let's see what it does. It's got quite a bronzy character, but it has had caramel added. I thought there might have been quite a bit of. Um, I thought there might have been quite a bit of um, sherry butt when I saw, first saw that colour, but no, it's predominantly American oak by the label. Mmm. So straight away there's that sea spray. Mmm. Yeah. And oh wow, there's oh there's an awful lot going on in there. It's it's all coming at me at once. I can't I can't get it out fast enough. So there's the sea spray, there's caramel, there's vanilla, and then there's these other things like peach and apricot. Yeah, these are the, the characters that come from that, um, having the maltings right there at the distillery. Mmm, yum. Oh, yeah. And there's also something coming through. It's like a, oh, what is that? Licorice? Mm. Maybe that's... I'm getting confused with the iodine. It's a, a particular characteristic of Beaumont, which I haven't recognised for quite a while. Mm, maybe that's what that is. Wow, it's certainly enchanting. There's a lot to look for. A lot of different flavours. It's really... Mm, it's not confusing. They're all complementary, but there's a lot of it. Well, mm. oh, okay. Gee whiz, that's a roller coaster. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bang, bang, bang. All these intensity of flavors coming through. Oh, and there's that saltiness right now coming through in the after palate and the iodine. Mm. Oh, I don't know how to describe iodine, but <laughs> try this. And it's that flavor that's, that's there on the finish. Yeah, right. It reminds me of, um, uh, you know when you cut yourself when you were a kid and the nurse used to put that red stuff on you? And it's kind of that smell. Um, Mercurochrome, I think that was called. And it was, it's that, that kind of medicine smell. But, but in this case, it's nice. It's really nice because it's kind of got that saltiness and then the rich sweetness through it. Now, I'm just going to have to go right back to the front of the palate because, ah, but... I got so distracted by all these other flavors coming through. Okay, so caramel, peaches and pear. Mm. Vanilla all over it. And then you start to get the saltiness and the, and the iodine. Yeah, right. Wow. Oh, mm. Beaumont, your henna let me down. Thank you. This is a really a mellow one. I'm going to really enjoy this one. 